Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Stylizing with the Cutout Filter. So when making thumbnail sketches for a client, I've had the situation many times before where I have a realistic 3D model, but I want to do a quick stylized thumbnail so they can focus on the composition of the final image, and not on the details. And to do this, I frequently use the Cutout Filter in Photoshop. So this tutorial will discuss the filter and show you more details on where, how, and why I use it. So here's more details about the situation I described. Say I have a realistic 3D render of a spaceship like this, and I want to do three to four quick scene thumbnails to show a client, which includes the spaceship. So here we have a 2D thumbnail background, which I quickly painted in Photoshop. Now if I add the spaceship to it as is, like this, and just give this to the client, they're likely to say, but wait, why is the spaceship so detailed and the background isn't? And uh, is this the way you plan on having it look for the final? Showing an image with two different finish levels on two different elements always seems to lead to confusion. So one way to fix this is to paint a more detailed background, but that takes extra time, and plus my goal right now is for the client to focus on the composition, not the details like textures on the spaceship or planet. Now my other option is to sketch the spaceship so it matches the background, but this seems like a waste of time because I already have a 3D ship, and it's really easy to position a 3D ship, which saves me a lot of time, especially if you have dozens of thumbnails to make. So this is where I use the cutout filter. Okay, so let me show you the cutout filter inside of Photoshop. So here I have my spaceship, and uh, you can see on the layers it's uh, transparent on a background. And then what we do is we go up to Filter and Filter Gallery, and under Artistic there's a whole bunch of different uh, filters in here, but this is the cutout one right here, and you can see the result uh, right here. So what it's doing is it's basically simplifying the uh, image you know, based on these uh, filter properties and gives it a little bit of a sketchy look, which is what we're going for here. Now I'd love to tell you what are the perfect settings for all these things, but the reality is, is the settings change depending on what it is you're doing. I've never found one set of settings that works perfectly for everything. But I'll briefly explain what the different parts are. So the first one is number of levels, and this controls basically the number of different colors it's going to use in the image. And so if you put it on really low, it only chooses a couple of colors, and if you put it up really high, it chooses more colors. Then edge simplicity, you can see here, if you put it way down here, it's much more detailed and keeps more of the detail of the original image. And as you bring it up further and further, it removes more of those details, creating these large blocks of color. And then, sort of similar, but uh, acts a little bit differently, is this edge fidelity, which um, also controls the lower the edge fidelity, the more uh, blocky it looks. And then, as it goes up higher, it uh, adds more of that detail back in. So, generally, I tend to find keeping edge simplicity, like down here is too low, um, somewhere up in this range tends to be good. So maybe about like halfway here, halfway there. And I usually keep number of levels reasonably high, like a six, seven, or eight in order to get the final image. Okay, and so here's it being used on the final image. So this is the original detailed render. And then this is the cutout filter version. And uh, you can see here, I also just added a, a quick little extra bit here, um, you know, the um, engine uh, thrust going on. And then the other thing to mention is frequently there are some weird artifacts that show up, like stuff with weird shapes that can appear here and there using this filter. And so I tend to spend just like a minute going in and doing a few little fixes like that, and then also a few little artistic tweaks too. So for example, here I'll, I'll grab this and uh, get rid of some of the, the, the weirdness there, like maybe over there as well. And then on top of that, I'll also go, okay, well, I really want this to pop, like make it very obvious the light's coming from here and hitting the ship on this side. So I'll go in and just quickly paint over top, add a little bit of extra rim light here. You know, even though this is technically in shadow, maybe do the same thing over here. I'll grab that, that uh, red and do that there. Just to really make the, uh, the thumbnail pop. So when the client sees it, it's really easy to read what's going on in this particular thumbnail. So one last quick little note. I tend not to use this technique for any finish concept, simply because most finished pieces require more detail, and usually I'm only doing one of them versus doing a whole ton of variations that are basically throwaway. So I want more control over the stylization, which means I usually paint it myself. But for those initial thumbnail iterations, I found this a great time-saving and confusion-saving technique. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this short video interesting and find the technique useful for your own work. 
And if you want more tutorials like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the education section. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.